After running multiple trials to make sure that we got it right, the Galaxy S25 Ultra battery test is finally here, where it's going head to head against its biggest competitor in the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Taking a look at the spec sheet, Samsung decided to stick with the same 5000 mAh battery as last year's phone, despite a lot of the Android competition using bigger ones. But then again, at least compared to the iPhones, it still got the advantage. Of course, optimization plays a bigger role than anything. And and that's an area where the iPhone has historically outperformed. Will that still be the case in 2025? Or will the Galaxy finally edge the iPhone out in a battery test? Let's find out. All right, we'll kick things off in the phone test, where each device is going on the same one hour call in our lab, where after 60 minutes of having continuous audio playing back through those earpieces, the iPhone takes the early lead. Of course, those indicators are only estimates and we'll get a much better idea of what's actually going on as the test progresses, like here in messaging, where after texting back and forth with our automated chatbots, this time the phones perform identically meaning the iPhone was able to hang on to that early lead, with a shot of actually improving it here in the email test, since while the phones both have 6.9 inch displays, technically the iPhone has slightly less screen area due to its larger cutout. But you know, it didn't seem to make a difference though, with the phones both dropping by five points once again. So pretty interesting results so far, but it's this browser test that I've been looking forward to, since in addition to randomly cycling through the same set of web pages, our robots are also scrolling through them, which makes this one of the more intensive tests we've done so far, where after an hour, it's an identical result again. So that makes it three times in a row that these phones have performed the same, at least in terms of percentage rain, since obviously the iPhone has that smaller battery, which means technically it's using up less juice per test. And that trend continues after an hour in Instagram, meaning heading into this 16 hour standby, the iPhone is still holding on to that four point advantage. Honestly, I'm not sure how much I trust that percentage though, since I do feel like the iPhone overrepresents early on, but we'll see if things change here overnight, where this time it's the Galaxy that does better, actually wiping out the iPhone's lead and taking a one point advantage for itself. Here on YouTube, it's worth noting that we calibrate the screens and the speakers to the same level on each phone, so that way we're not penalizing any one phone, where after binge watching some phone buff, man, it's the same result again with each phone dropping by eight points this time. So, you know, maybe Samsung didn't go with a bigger battery this year because they didn't feel like they needed to, with the Galaxy now matching the iPhone 22 hours into it. And after an hour of gaming, it actually pulls ahead, improving its lead to three points now. Of course, it's worth noting though that something similar happened last year with the S24 Ultra, where that phone also took the lead around this point, only to have the iPhone make a comeback later and get the win. But at least in maps, that doesn't happen, with the S25 Ultra improving its lead up to four points. But we'll see if the iPhone can make a comeback here in Spotify, since historically, this is an area where the Galaxy phones have struggled. But after an hour of listening to music later, not this time. The Galaxy went toe to toe with the iPhone, meaning it enters Snapchat with a four point lead. Whereas on the S24 Ultra, the Galaxy was actually at a two point deficit by now which to me means Samsung may have actually improved the battery life despite not giving the phone a bigger battery. However, this Snapchat test is arguably the most intensive one that we have, since it's basically using all of the sensors on the phones, from the camera and microphone to the speakers and Wi-Fi, where this time it's the iPhone that does better, cutting the Galaxy's lead back down to two. But the Galaxy is in a good position. It's actually got the lead heading into App Cycle, where before, that was never the case. But after an hour into App Cycle, it looks like the iPhone might be making a comeback with the phones all tied up at 9%. And unfortunately for the Galaxy, that 9% doesn't last it as long, with it going 50 minutes in before finally calling it quits. At which point the iPhone is barely hanging on with 1% left to go. So there you have it. The iPhone technically gets the win here with it lasting another 11 minutes before it finally dies. But honestly, I think if battery life is a concern for you, 
you really can't go wrong with either of these phones. Anyways, that is it for me in this video. Thank you for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the very next episode.